What's up, everybody? Good morning and up, welcome to episode number 54 of Ricardo Sturdivant's Tuesday Feelings live on the Reinventing the Tattoo Network. As you know, we're streaming out live from all over the country. So if you're watching, drop a comment in the chat, letting us know where you're watching from. Throughout the show, we'll keep an eye on the comments. Uh, beyond live shows like this, you can watch all of the Reinventing Network shows, art jams, drawing groups, interviews, panels, and webinars on our YouTube channel and website, as well as our new Roku channel. If you haven't checked us out on Roku yet, you can find it by searching for Reinventing the Tattoo on your Roku device for 24-7 streaming content. This stuff is really nice to put on in the background for yourself and clients while you're tattooing. We have several weekly shows and drawing groups happening almost every day as well. If you're watching, you're welcome to tune in or join the Zoom call with us. The link to the Zoom is easy to find. Um, I'll go over those show times soon, but if you go to reinventingthetattoo.com, scroll all the way down to our Google Calendar, all the Zoom links for each event are right in there. If you are here watching, our YouTube channel is also set up for reminders about all of these upcoming events. Jason is with us today, but on Sundays at 1, you can find him leading his skill building Sunday class. Monday mornings start early at 9 a.m. with Drawing for Tattooers, led by James Wisdom. Right after that at 11, you can join myself, Gabe Ripley of Tattoo Now, and Jake Meeks of Fireside Tattoo Network to talk about what's going on in the world of tattooing with frequent special guests. Later on at 5 is Robbie Ripple's Let's Talk About Feelings, and Monday evenings at 9 is a Reinventing Evolution class led by Guy Aitchison. Right now, the second evolution trimester is going on. If you're interested in that, Follow the link in the description for information about the various learning opportunities that Guy offers on his platform. Right here every Tuesday is Tuesday Feels with Ricardo. Wednesdays at noon is a Tattoo Now show, followed by our business course every other Wednesday at 1. Every Thursday at 6 p.m. is Tattoo Collecting 101. And a few real-world events that we're super excited about that we've been talking about for almost a year is coming up next weekend in Tony Urbanic's Rubber City Tattoo Invitational. We also have Derb Morrison's Health City in Phoenix at the end of August. Before we kick off, lastly, we want to thank our sponsors for helping us provide all this content to you guys for free. We've got World Tattoo Events at worldtattooevents.com. If you're looking for the best resource for tattoo events, that's exactly where you need to be. Also, thank you to Raw Pigments, an ink company that's tapping into the source with acrylic-free inks that have been impressing artists all around the world. If you're watching this right now and you want to support reinventing, you can use the code reinventing the tattoo at checkout to get 10% off your purchase. Also, thanks to Gabe at Tattoo Now, uh, Fireside Tattoo, Amy's Apprenticeship Diaries, and Eco-Friendly Tattoo Supplies.com. Lastly, we always like to say thank you to Guy Aitchison, the founder and inspiration behind reinventing um, his biomech encyclopedia DVDs. Machines and paintings are all available at guyaitchison.com. All right, now the best part of the day, bringing in everybody, Jason, Ricardo, Fawn, here we go. What's up? If you oh. like cheese and enchiladas. <laughs> <laughs> Getting lost in the streets of Philadelphia. Yeah, that's no fun. <laughs> no, not at all. So not good morning, Ricardo. How are you? Hey, good morning, Lauren. I'm doing pretty good. I'm um, hanging out. Not wanting some cheese enchiladas for breakfast, that's for sure. But if, cheese enchiladas but way, are good at any time. The way Jason danced with the song, though, I think I'd probably order some. I'd be like, yeah. that, looks that looks appetizing. Oh. The food. The food that is, Jason. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> how, about, uh, how about you, Fawn? How are you doing this morning? Pretty good. I still haven't had my coffee yet, though. I'm going to sneak off and get it. Right on. Uh, I'm rolling, so that's priorities. Yeah, prioritize. <laughs> it's funny. Yeah, um, today is Tuesday morning. We're on the Tuesday morning fields, and my camera just went crazy. There we go. I'm back. I disappeared for a second as a magic trick. Um, been doing a lot, a lot of thinking these past few days, and um, kind of marinating on this quote um by Seneca um he's a stoic philosopher I buy into uh, a lot of the stoicism quite a bit and I think I've kind of like stumbled and fumbled these past few weeks and uh have forgotten to look on these kind of quotes for um references of uh inspiration and the one that I've been thinking about a lot of and I read it last week was you are scared of dying and tell me is the kind of life 
you lead really any different from being dead. <laughs> and uh, that one's been hitting me pretty hardcore lately. You know, um, we go through a lot of different things in our lives and we go through some ups and downs and we go through different career changes. We go through different choices that we might have thought could have been beneficial or could have been better than they were or, or the opposite where it's not anything you wanted at all and you find yourself stuck, right? Um, and I think about that a lot and I've been thinking about the idea of success that goes along with it. And I think it really boils down to, for me, that um, we define our success based on the way that we actually live our life, right? Uh, versus the way you really want to live our life. Um, so instead of letting life happen, let's uh, make some decisions and choices that kind of help promote the life that we really want to have. Um, because we're all going to die. <laughs> It's all going to be that big, what is it? The spirit in the sky. Spirit in the sky. It's going to go. Honey, good Ricardo, <clears throat> that's a good good song. Um, we attributed that to my uncle who passed a couple weeks ago. Really? Yeah. Man, um, there's a wavelength. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's cool that you're thinking deeply about a lot of these things because I know like the transformation is continual with you. Uh, but looking towards like a stoic mentality is is tough. I feel like the first, you know, like the first reaction usually is emotions, but to handle it without those. Yeah. So interesting. Yeah. That's the thing that I've been, I've been waiting through uh, a little while for a little while now is um, finding out how hard it really is to kind of like find out the emotional part of it versus the reality part of it. And they're all very real. You know what I mean? Both of them are very real. But the thing that's cool about the Stoics is that they kind of start to help you realize, like, you can divide the two, right? Or you can actually not even divide them, but be able to divide them in a way to interpret it where it's not your reality. It doesn't have to be reality. It, you can, it's an acceptance of the self, and it's an acceptance of realizing that we can't allow the emotions to dictate the action. Right. And I've been going back and forth with that quite a bit, especially with the way that I've been uh, expressing myself more so lately and the mood that I've been in more so lately and realizing that at some point in time, it's still there's no control over anything. Right. There's no control over anything except for the emotional attachment. Um, and I've uh, been going through it pretty hardcore and it's been awesome. And I'm ready. You know, I'm feeling like I'm ready for that um, that realization. Uh, and it is a constant growth. It's a constant thing that we have to accept sometimes even, um, no matter what happens. Like, I've known this whole time, like, okay, we got to, like, just let things go. We got to let things go. Let things go. But when you're in it, man, it's a totally different scenario. You know? It's entirely different, dude. And it's hard to uh, accept the fact that we're human sometimes. Hey, Ricardo, think, have you ever seen... <clears throat> The movie called soul it's a it's an anime yeah. okay yeah. so you know how 21 she's just a being right mm -hmm. but when that being meets body it's like pfft. and it's all yeah. of a sudden like all these things are capable of being felt because you have a body mm -hmm. but like being dead yeah checking that body what would we really feel so the opportunity yeah. to feel is is the lifetime that we have so i mean even if it's ups and downs, cherish it like your life as a value scale so that you know you're kind of expanding the value of your life. Yeah. That's a really good way to put it. And I love that movie too. If you guys haven't seen it, yeah, you should check it out. Yeah, as the body is introduced, I feel like all of these things are felt for the first time, but understanding that that you are separate from the, the feeling of those feelings and emotion and that is kind of where stoicism plays and in, comes into play where you realize it's a separation between what you feel and the, and the emotion itself. Right. It, it's like, it's like the feeling of that part of being human is exactly what I was talking about. You know what I mean? Like um, we're in this moment and it's never perfect. You know what I mean? And the, the, the stoicism is pretty much like, well, that sucks. That happened. What else are you going to do about it? You know what I mean? <clears throat> you can either wallow in it and you can 
be dead along with that emotion or you can kind of remember that you're still alive and that it's it's okay to like um interpret it you know like we have the opportunity to interpret it so i think the feels are definitely there for real being in the human body like you're talking about but it's also important to remember to feel the interpretation too you know does that make sense at all recognizing it as that yes Sure. recognizing it right recognizing it and i think it goes hand in hand with a lot of things that we do on our daily basis you know what i mean like we are as as a lot of tattoo artists here in the community it's a very unique position that we're in given the fact that we get to uh talk about what we want to talk about you know what i mean we don't have to worry about wearing a um wearing a uniform to work we don't have to worry about um we don't have to worry too much about like people being uh, disagreeable with, with the things that we might mention or that we might have an opinion on. You know what I mean? Um, we you don't want to go through life being a dick by any means, but um, you know what I mean? Like it's okay for us to have our own opinion. Um, so it's a very unique position that we're in where there's nobody really telling you, okay, you have to be here at nine o'clock. You have to be here at 10 a.m. and make sure to punch a card or log in on your, you know, your, your streaming device and, and make sure that you get quota amount of work done a day or somebody's checking in on you really, you know, you know, there's a lot of checks and balances for ourselves, And sometimes that can be difficult to navigate. You know, I don't know about you guys, but every once in a while you get that kind of moment of like, Oh my God, my, my schedule is full. I have three different drawings that I have to have finished by next month and they're pretty big tattoos. And uh, you kind of like professionally procrastinate sometimes. <laughs> and it can create some anxiety, I think. Induce some anxiety sometimes. I procrastinate a lot. You do? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I always That's... find I work better under pressure. Yeah. I don't know why I just always have. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm going to bring Faith in. Cool. Yeah. Creatures Cave says uh, Marcus Aurelius is very good as well. I agree. Yes. Yep. Yeah. I agree about Marcus Aurelius. Um, and he asked if we've ever followed Ryan Holiday. I don't think I've heard of Ryan Holiday. Have you guys heard of Ryan Holiday? Let's look him up real quick. <clears throat> okay if you can hear us welcome welcome so, I haven't um, talked to you in a while yeah it's been a minute hey face how's it going good painting yeah. hola sorry i'm eating mm-hmm. oh it looks like he talks a lot about ego ego is the enemy couldn't agree more i'll have to check him out it's pretty good the obstacle is the way there's another title of his book. That's a good one. Stillness is the key. You know, it's so crazy. I just read this title of his book. It's called Stillness is the Key. It's like uh, reactions as well. You know, I've also been thinking about reactions versus actions that happen around us. You know, it's like this form of control that we have, I think, sometimes where we have to have it happen a certain way or we have this idea of what we want a situation to be. And it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be that way. So like when it doesn't happen, what else are you going to do about it? I mean, you can, can you can express your opinion and what you would actually like for it to be, but that doesn't mean that it's going to be that way. So well, that the goes more, back to the whole stoic mentality of releasing attachment, right? Releasing attachment, exactly. Or control. You know, right. Well, same thing, different words. Right. You know, when you release that and you recognize that I have an idea of how I would like something to turn out, say a painting. Yeah. For hypothetical sake, I have an idea of how I would like it to work and how I would like it to look and, you know, what I want and where. And, you know, I've, I've got something I'm trying to create or manifest or depict. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. And you sit down and you put brush to canvas and you start painting and it's not really what you had in your mind. You like it, it gets the message across, things look great, and it's an amazing painting in the end. But maybe it's not exactly what you had in your mind. The stoic mentality releases you from that and says that 
you know, you can't stick to that idea of the way that you want things to turn out. Mm-hmm. You, you have to let that go. Yeah, absolutely. You have to. Um, you can have an idea of what you would like, but that doesn't mean that that's going to be the way that it is. And when you accept that things are the way that they are, pure and simple, and things are going to be the way that they are going to be, pure and simple. Mm-hmm. It's very freeing feeling. I want to piggyback off of that thought, Jason. <clears throat> My younger sister, she's got a fantastic humor and a great personality but sometimes she drops these like little pearls of wisdom that are like so profound where it's like Brittany I don't even know where that came from but one of her little like always stuck all along she had a she had a friend that was going through a break just heartbroken and she's like you know Chelsea you don't know what you don't know yeah that's funny you said that like it's just kind of, I mean, she said it so simply and just like without a care in the world, but like it was, it just hit at the right moment. And it's like, Ooh, you, you don't know what you don't know. And that's one of the yeah. beautiful things about a derails. Like sometimes the, the best things happen when you let go of control just a little bit and you let the plan unfold. Mm-hmm. I think that like, you don't know what you don't know. Sometimes it's <clears throat> me. For me, here's what it does: is it allows me to choose my battles a little bit more wisely, yeah. and you know, kind of like let go of things because, like, you know, you d- you don't know what's going to happen next. And if you let go of this thing in you or this thing that's holding you back or this idea that you just kind of got your mindset on, if you just let go of that and let it happen, you don't know how much better things could be than you're even imagining. Yep. You know. Yep. Also, also, if you're going to have some attachment because you're you're a type of person who enjoys attachment to things as well, just realize that not all attachments are always permanent. But like, you know, when people say a breath of fresh air or like when the sun hits, but the sun doesn't always stay up. It still cycles back to nighttime. But appreciating stuff for the moment and attach yourself to that and, and keep it there. But you know, it's, it's not always meant to be in that same exact spot as well. Yeah. That's, that's a good way to think about it for sure. Yeah, it's and about that, appreciation. Yeah. I think that's what you were just appreciate that individual minute because you will never have it again, but right. if you appreciate it and you embrace it for what it is you and you that. release that, you know, and then you let that go, you open yourself up for new experiences and you open yourself up for more feelings and for, to embrace other individual moments, you know, it's, but until you can release that previous moment, you don't always have room to capture and hold other moments. Yeah. That's true, man. You know what? Um, Lost boy mobile tattoo in the chat said, flip side you can't teach yourself something you don't know and i think that's exactly what it is that we're saying until you experience it until you are going through it you're not you're never gonna know and that's an interesting dynamic about us as people is that like we're all on the same plane of existence you know what i mean but in a very physical sense but at the same time it's it's a very mental one too you know what i mean it's more mental than it is physical and i think that's the attachment part that we're talking about too is like um not being attached to ourself in a physical sense sometimes like it's very real whenever we're getting tattooed because <laughs> ouch you know what i mean and it definitely ties you into that moment because ow but um <laughs> you know what i mean ultimately we're only borrowing this like thing for a little while anyway and it actually carries this vehicle that we're in it's actually a vehicle for us to be able to interpret you know what i mean through physical sense and through emotional senses at the same time and it's an incredible thing, you know what I mean? And uh, it always reminds me of that song by Operation Ivy. It's like, all I know is that I don't know. I don't know if you guys have ever heard it, but just check it out because it's a good one. <clears throat> and at the end of it, he's like, and that's fine, you know? So it's true. <laughs> um, he also says, Lost Boy Mobile Tattoo in the chat also says, each moment in memory makes make it one worth remembering. Yeah, for sure, man. That's the thing, though, isn't it? Like when you make them worth remembering, sometimes that shit can hurt, son. (laughs) 
<laughs> but uh, yeah, but it's worth it. In the end, it's worth it because you carry it on with you and um, it helps make things that much more beautiful the next time it comes around, right? Yeah. But yeah. I look at I look at everything as a learning experience. What did I learn? What positive things can I take away from this? You know, and it doesn't really matter what the situation is. There's going to be something positive that comes from it. Whether you realize what you were capable of, whether you realize that, hey, this painting didn't turn out exactly the way that I thought, but you know what? It's absolutely gorgeous. You know, like if I was Fawn, every painting I did would be like hanging up in a museum somewhere, right? (laughs) Because they're gorgeous. They might not turn out exactly the way she wants, but they are. Right. Well, it's a pack of incomplete work in the basement, but I'm working real hard to complete some of those. So, bad. Well, you know, but it's like you have to understand that. Oh, that time out, you guys. have to take something uh, positive Jason, away from that. I got to welcome in Kier. Oh, I don't snap. Like to interrupt you, but <laughs> I had to. Here we go. <laughs> Yeah. Welcome. Safe to say we've all missed her a lot. Yeah. Like everybody pause for the cause. She may enter anytime. <clears throat> but yeah, Jason, keep going. I'm sorry to interrupt you. Yeah, but I mean, there's a silver line to be taken away from everything, right? You know, say you lose everything that you have. There's a silver lining that gives you a blank slate to start over from scratch and become and do whatever you want to do. Absolutely. It's not saying that it's going to be easy, but there is always a positive that can be taken away from just about every single situation. Oh yeah, for sure, man. It's like being critiqued. You know what I mean? Like honestly, one of the, one of the main reasons that I stayed away from everything for so long was because of a fear of being analyzed to a certain point you know what i mean and uh that definitely did it for me how's it going man thanks dude that was the local post office doing their devious job um yeah, critiques are great you might yeah, feel like everyone's being hypercritical and just aggressive and it's like well no one said anything positive it's like you're right we didn't because we're trying to help you get better. That's the whole point of this. Trying to make it grow. Exactly. And it's like the painful things. Those, those things that we avoid is where the most growth is to begin with. Right? Yeah, growth is painful. And there's a, reason, there's a reason that we avoid it most of the time. And I think that's a good like uh, mile marker or check as far as our, our, our what is it? what's the right way to say it? Like our, our GPS location in more modern terms. You know what I mean? Like it's... Um, it's a good way to kind of like reassert where you're at. And if you're af- af- afraid of it and you're avoiding it, then most likely you should probably run straight for it. You know what I mean? And that's one of the things that I've been doing the past couple of years. And do you think that you would have uh, just considering, you know, we talk obviously on a personal level, but do you mm-hmm. think you would have jumped right in, in the situation that you're in now looking back in hindsight, would you still have just, have you fallen in love with this experience enough yet? Do you think? To the point I'm of there. appreciating it i'm getting there for sure yeah. i'm getting there for sure it's like it's a daily thing you know what i mean and it's a daily reminder of um mantra speaking mantras in the morning you know what i mean to myself the one that i've been saying to myself a lot lately is there is no tomorrow there's only now you know what i mean there's no control we have this moment only and that's all there really is to it um so that's a good question and to answer you honestly at this point, I've been avoiding it for a little while now. And I think that's why it's taken so long for me to get to the where I'm, I'm starting to feel now, you know? Um, but yeah, so if that answers anything. You know, it's like when I put my daughter or my son to sleep, I don't know they're sleeping until they have this one particular sigh. But in life yeah. in general, you haven't had that sigh yet. So you're yep. just like walking around and you haven't taken a breath, like you haven't, but when you do, you know, when you allow yourself to do that, that's when you can take your first step forward. Right now you're basically lingering 
yep. around. Yep. Yeah, basically lingering around and um, you know, continuing to absorb myself in the in that situation rather than like, okay, this is we're good, we're we're good. Let's just keep on trekking. Man, I, I don't. I've been watching a motivational speaker series on YouTube for like two weeks. Mm -hmm. Joe back in the line. (laughs) And one of them is, uh, I think Jim Carrey, he was doing like the commencement address and watching a lot of those. But uh, one of the things is you can fail at the things you are bad at. So you might as well do what you love is one of them. As far as your dreams and everything, because I have like a, you're a failure issue, but also he says it's okay to ask the universe for things and to want things in life, but just be open to how they come into your life. Yep. Yeah. What I was about when you guys were talking. It's like it's you can kind of decide what you get with like the theory of attraction and all that kind of stuff if you go to manifest your life, but as far as how it actually comes to you. You have to kind of be open and looking for looking for it, not necessarily in the way that it's gonna you think it might come to you. So yeah. That's a good one. Definitely a good one. Because it's the thing, like we want things to be a certain way, but it doesn't mean that it's gonna be that way. Sometimes like, it helps with analogies, like Jason said, like as a painting. And you can really kind of step back and squint and look at your own life as that and realize like the process. Got it. Yeah. So that's my thoughts for today. Kira, by the way, welcome. Hi. Uh, we didn't say hi to you yet either. Hi. I didn't want to be rude and like interrupt. So it's it a very, very important conversation. So I didn't want to. Just come in and be like, hello. Hi, stranger. Uh, <laughs> Hi. Hello, everybody. <laughs> What's up, dude? Not much. Just doing some morning chores and getting ready for work. Just thought I'd say hello. <laughs> What's up, dude? Not much. Um, nothing really, honestly. Just living life at this point, right? Right. How's work going? Uh, it's going good. It, kids are coming back in end of August, beginning of September. So um, we've been pretty busy since they've been gone. Um, but I can't wait for them to come back so we can be even more busier before December. Um, so it's been pretty good. Loving it. Doing the Boston Convention in September, too. So that'll be fun. That's my only convention of the year so that'll be fun but yeah nothing really (laughs) just wanted to check in with you guys and see how you guys are doing what you guys are working on love the space by the way all the gold frames love it (laughs) that's what i said as i saw you gotta class it up a little bit you know what i mean all that all that is around me is glitter and gold (laughs) (laughs) I love Yay. that. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, I like this space, man. I'm, I'm in here with a bunch of really good people. Um, I'm learning a lot. Uh, it's been very uh, impressing on my work and stuff like that, too. Uh, I've gotten back to doing more analog drawing than I have digital drawing and stuff like that, too. So that's been awesome. Um, digging it, loving it. Um, and there's a lot of very traditional approaches with tattooing here, and I'm been, definitely been applying them to more of a style, I guess, that I might tr- be trying to develop. I'm not even sure if that's the right way to say it, or a style that I have, which I'm not even sure if I have one particular thing. I don't know, but um, it's been fun. So it's been, it's a really cool environment. It's fun that I get to decorate my own station and stuff like that too. So I still get a little bit of look to the crawly guys, like that little crow up there and stuff. It's on my skulls and everything. Although I will say one thing. <laughs> this kind of is a bummer. One of the shelves fell and my human skulls were on it and the teeth got busted up on it. So that's a bummer. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 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 uh. 
let's be positive <laughs> about this. It gives them more texture. Gives them more texture, more more character, more characters. There you go. <laughs> you can give them a whole backstory now. You can be like, this dude got into a bar fight, and there like, you go. yeah, you know that's yeah. how his teeth got all busted up and cracked, and like, yep, yep. Uh, real quick, uh, in the comments on YouTube, Creatures Cave says, I effing love you guys. I want to type a whole bunch of S, asterisk, 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 but my hands are full with tattooing right now. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, and Casey Lee is Lost Boy Mobile. He's at work. Life is a culmination of experiences, and the essence of existence is shapes who we are and become. For sure, man. For sure. Oh, and he also wants to know, Kier, how does your camera follow you like that? Honestly, it's a it's a love hate relationship with this thing. I'm just using my iPad. It's the brand new iPad, and it just like it keeps doing that no matter what. Yeah, I go. <laughs> video tracking. <laughs> oh, okay. That's scary and awesome at the same time. Right, it's a love hate relationship because if I'm a little close to the camera, it'll like zoom into my face like this, but I'm not really that close, <laughs> so. I just stand pretty far away for it to actually work, but it's just a new iPad, Apple, you know. Gotcha. <laughs> what generation is it? Uh, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I, just, <laughs> <laughs> I just said I need a new iPad, and he said this is the new big one. I said I need that one, <laughs> so <laughs> I don't know what generation it is. Tattoo now says good morning. Morning. Good morning, Gabe. How do you do, sir? Yeah. Fawn, what are you working on today? Uh, I'm still kind of noodling around on that weird snake skeleton thing. I'm plugged in, so I can't do too much. But yeah, it's turning into a thing. Oh, that's killer. I like it. I like it. that uh, Bigfoot painting that you did. I love that, that you're working on. It's awesome. Thank you. Um, I'm, I actually, that's for an art show in October, and I'm really glad I got it finished as quickly as I did because I'll be able to get it varnished and send it out. Usually my oil paints are too fresh to varnish for a show, so it's kind of nice actually, like, not procrastinating. So you mean to I, actually I hate- meet, meet, a, meet, meet a deadline or beat a deadline? I don't know. No idea what you're talking about. <laughs> I think, uh, just I work way better under pressure. I think it's in front of me. My brain just does a good job solving it when it needs to be solved. Where if it's a problem that's not even a problem for six months, I'm not even going to think about it. Like, yeah. Could change. So. I feel you. I feel you entirely. But the problem comes, I think, for me whenever I do stuff like that and it sucks, it's like, explaining that to the client and they're just kind of like well where's my drawing and you're like, oh man just you know what dude sit down i'm gonna draw on you some or some sharpies and we'll take a picture of it and then i'll draw off that picture how about that and they're like okay patients i kind of do the opposite i have like really long consultations with people like, sometimes they're a full two but i usually schedule about an hour and a half mm-hmm. um and I sit there with my ipad and we like mock up everything together so when oh, they- yeah it's like it's like yes this is going to be a freehand tattoo draw it based on this right on you like, oh okay so like the brainstorm work is done i might still have like some problem solving to do in the moment but 95 percent like settled and committed on at our consultation so it's kind of nice. i don't have people bombarding me with either draw they can just take a picture take a picture of like rough procreate mock-up that seems to really help me. Like they know that I've put the brainstorm into it and they've helped. And then it's just a matter of waiting all the work done until the day of your appointment. So it has made things really like less pressure for me to just long time and do all the designing right. Away. Trying to spend a few hours later. on. Yeah. 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 But not everybody can like creatively like on the spot do things with somebody and like whoever their entourage looking over your shoulder too so that's a thing to keep in mind but 
You know, I think that's something that everybody should practice for sure. Like one of the first shops that I worked at was like that, where I was in the corner of this half wall and people could lean over the edge and just stare right directly, like almost, almost at my head. You know what I mean? And I had to tattoo while they were like watching me tattoo their, their mom or their friend or something like that. And it's like pretty strenuous, but it developed a thicker kind of skin for, for like that process for sure. You know what I mean? Like being able to like work under visual pressure and stuff like that. Yeah, I agree. I'm like a rabbit hole of it. One time I hadn't been tattooing very long and I was tattooing at a biker event, like a big rodeo. There was me and a couple of other tattooers there, but it was late at night and I was the only one still working. <clears throat> and there was this cover band playing <clears throat> and the cover band, they weren't, they weren't bad. They weren't bad. They were just like your garden variety cover band, but I had more of a crowd watching me work over in the corner than they had at the big stage. So they shut the lights off on me. Oh man. Then everybody went and got their like just blood lights all around me. And like, nobody watched the band after they shut the lights off on me. So it kind of really backfired. But it's one of those moments where like, when I realized what was going on, when I realized I had like 70 people just like crowded around me, like watching as closely as they could, it was like, oh, wow, people really enjoy this. Like, it's so boring, like to watch a tattoo happen, but it's crazy how amazed people are at the process. So it yeah. is, it's funny that <clears throat> as a tattooer, the important thing is how the tattoo wears on our class how happy our client is with it the like foreverness of the tattoo and how they're going to share it with people the whole rest of their life like that's a lot of pressure like that alone is a lot of pressure but then add a whole crowd of people watching you lay each and every single line if 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 that doesn't make you like have nerves of steel i don't know what does yeah totally entirely having having guy watch you tattoo Oh, oh man i know so you don't necessarily need a whole bunch of people around watching you tattoo <laughs> all you need is that one dude that you really look up to yeah. and it's like the most intimidating thing in the world yeah we we're hanging derb, Go ahead. yeah what's that yeah i mean when you work with derb it's like you you deal with that every day yep it's it's crazy they're such a flawless tattooer. I was actually talking to Kyle last night about Derb. I was like, have you ever actually paid attention to Derb's work other than just like looking at it as like Durbanese or like a spinoff of American traditional? And he was like, I've kind of looked at it. And I was like, you should really look at some of Derb's really large pieces because I don't know anybody that can do huge smooth, like swaths of like gentle gradients that go from like neon yellow to hot pink to like neon green to purple back to blue without like a hiccup or a single like holiday or negative space in the whole gradient like derb is the smoothest shader i've ever seen like he packs color like just like he's working on velvet and then everything just reads so smooth. so when it comes to like color packing and shading it's a little nerve-wracking when derb walks in the room but you just gotta suck it up and just do it anyways wow i was child this one piece in particular and this was before i um worked with red tree I was getting worked on by adam so like we knew we knew one another but if there was anything new that i was working on and i was like well there's back that i got going two huge tulips but there's three cover-ups in it but the background of it is just like smooth yellow the orange to purple gradients all the way behind everything with like a stained glass mandala. But the whole time I was doing those big swaths of color, it was like, what would Derb do? How would Derb do this? So when I saw him and got to show it, it was, it made me feel like, hmm, nicely done. Hmm, thanks. I tried to do it like you would, sir. <laughs> yeah. I'll be honest, man. Having guy watch you tattoo is one of the most nerve wracking things I've ever done, for sure. And then, can we pull up some of Derb's work, Lauren? Yeah. 
You know, it's funny, Ricardo, that you say that to Fawn because she's going to be tattooing with Guy soon. It's just kind of a little comical. <laughs> if I had a mustache, I'd be twisting it right now. <laughs> it's funny. I should be I should be more nervous about working with Guy, but we painted together a little bit and we've like brainstormed and like talked art a lot I honestly I think we're going to work really really nicely together there are a lot of like there are a lot of very specific things that guy does when he like handles the skin and how he handles his and after like having him work on me I think there are a lot of like innate similarities and I and I think we're going to work really really together. like not not to be like you know, not to not to be like I'm not nervous about it at all, but I think we're just going to work very smoothly together. That's killer, man. I don't. But but the fact that I've had him work on me changes the whole equation. Like if he had never worked on me, and I was going to work with him. It would be a totally different game. It right. would be so scary. Right. But, that is understandable. Um, I'm pulling it up in a second. I gotta do some stuff real quick on my computer. That's what it. So today, so like we don't even need. What were you gonna say? I'm so sorry. I, I cut you off. I said, Lauren's like, we don't even need to let herbs work. Yeah, <laughs> man, it's just so good. So good. Herb still does this funny thing. He, I guess he's done this all along, but he'll like work on a drawing tattoo and he'll show, I don't know if he'll show the whole shop, but he'll show me and he'll be like, what do you think of this? And he'll like ask for my critiques on it, like back to the critique top topic. And it's cool to like take somebody's work who I look up to and he, he's asking me, how can I make this better? And I have to give him an answer. How can he make this better? So sometimes it's like, okay, I gotta look at this through somebody else's eyes and actually like look what he's taking skin back in the 90s he would do that with drawings and he would take them around to everybody in the shop like everybody would get a copy of the drawing and he'd, he'd put it in front of them and he'd say fit do what needs fixed in this and then they'd all give them back to him and each one of them would fix something else in the drawing so when derb went and did his final draft of the drawing he could incorporate all the ideas that everybody had to make it better I thought that was a pretty cool way to like really get coworkers and like colleagues involved in your, I don't know, the, the quality of your ideas. Yeah. You know, I mean, if you're trying to push your work a little bit differently to entirely step out of yourself, that's one good way to do it. Because then you're taking away that filter that is you, right? Great. That's pretty cool. And like, he thing what's messed up with this drawing almost like it was like a pop quiz oh look yep, at that super solid Ugh. and derb stuff ages beautifully like i've seen a lot of his work that's very very aged and it looks like it's a year old nice look at those finger waves too mm -hmm. that's one of the, my own work your waves are always weak if that's a necessary element. It definitely does a really good job of breaking it up, like the, uh, those intersecting angles. Like you can see it's all there. It's all repetitive, but it's all very interesting at the same time. Very kind of changes. A lot of his inspiration from like early skateboard art too. So if you think about mm. that, what that, like it's the kind of graphics that you would see on a skateboard deck for sure yeah that's killer take a look at that skull that black and gray skull oh do I see some Star Wars stuff I sure do there you go Course. with derb everything's got star wars hidden in it somewhere nice yeah super solid thick and thin line weight variations 
lots of contrast and it's still like a more of a traditional um approach to tattooing yeah derp still lines with a coil machine too oh ah, okay are those opaque grays i see in there yeah yeah you see how he leaves like a skin brick and then goes into the opaque gray so the opaque yeah, yeah. I kind of like those weird little things he does. Creates like a little toned down highlight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like it. It's definitely set up for longevity, isn't it? Yeah. I think that's one of Derb's favorite words. Longevity. <laughs> Very colorful. Very much so. Some old skin tears. Oh, his vegetarian tattoo. He just reshared this again. That's fun. There's some of that Swiss cheese biomac. The Swiss cheese biomac. That's the word I was looking for. Circa late 1990s. Yeah. Okay. We got to be okay with it. The 90s happened. Yeah. I know. I know. I know. I grew Very up cool. in the 90s. Like, I get it. <laughs> I grew up drawing Swiss cheese biomech. Very cool. You're Purple and green is complementary colors all the time, and it's so effective. I think that's the thing that kind of like separates his work and traditional traditional work is his color cho color choices are always just out of the world, out of this world. That's cool, man. And you can see how the the how effective it is to have more contrast in the subject matter versus the background and stuff like that too. Mm -hmm. How they complement each other and how they help each other fall back and stand out a little bit more. I like the translucent effects he gets too with a lot of his overlapping transparent spots. Like look at the eyes right there. You can see the edge of the face by using the orange and the yellow separation to create the rest of that form instead of just leaving it solid. Yeah, it takes a lot of foresight to plan things like that. Yeah. The color works. Yeah, but it gives it just enough of that translucent look, but it still completes the form. I really, really like that. Yep, he knows what he's doing. Yeah, tiny bit. <clears throat> yes. Hello? Yep, we're still here. Okay. Cool, sorry. <laughs> Everyone's just, just in deep thought right <laughs> now. Yeah, I had yeah. to step away and grab my uh, grab my water. I apologize about that. Uh, Neil Foster in the chat says, hi, hi Lauren. Hey, Neil. Uh, Amber Morgan said that she has a good friend in Ashbury Park that does paintings to live music. I think she was commenting on uh, Fawn's story about painting at a, at a music show. That was pretty fun when um, the Vapors of Morphine were playing up at the uh, Paradise Gathering and uh, we were all drawing and stuff like that. That was a pretty good time. Yeah, I enjoyed them a lot. Yeah, they rule, man. I love that band. And uh, to see them live in such an intimate like environment was just that much better. And then with all the artists and stuff like that too, like and then meeting most of the people for the first time ever, that was awesome. And then, of course, the, the horsemen getting together. This was radical. <laughs> All of us in one room at one time. Yeah, man, that's cool. 
Good work. <clears throat> to be around that every talking day. Talking about so. a needle jig thing happening right after. Uh, I know the Richmond and New York tattoo conventions are the same weekend on in October, but he's been talking about going back to Jimmy Peak with like Mark and stuff. Oh, very cool. Right around that time. Yeah. What around cool what time? So the New York convention is October twentieth to twenty second, or twenty first to twenty third. One of those two. So right around that time frame. But Gabe can okay. clear the air on that. Uh, I'd like to share something with you guys real quick. Oh crap! Sorry about that. I think I, I think I just back to meeting. Um, I'd like to share something with you guys real quick and get your your opinion on it real fast. If that's okay. Let's see if I can't sh being sure. Because uh, I'm going to have to be signing off here. I think I have a client coming in. Uh, start broadcast. Three, two, one. Okay, so I have this little drawing that I'm going to be doing on top of a hand today. Uh, and I wanted to see what you guys thought about just the overall placement of the shapes and stuff like that. And here's some of the reference that I was using. Which hand? Left or right? Uh, well, I mean, if it's going to go on his left or right, I could always flip it right. But for right now, I think it's going to be his right hand. So I'm going to tighten some of this stuff up. And he wants a little demon kind of crawling out of here. So I don't want to go too crazy with a lot of the detail. It's going to be very suggestive kind of shapes on him. So I'm thinking that I can go in and I think if I get some of this eyeball out of the way, It'll kind of help establish that foreground on it too. Yeah. Yeah, you would have to block some of that out. And I can have some of the shading coming off of from behind him, the demon itself, and bump up the contrast in that eyeball and bring some more attention to him too, right? Yeah, I would even stretch that lower eyelid down a little bit more. Yeah. And then give that like a little bit of a, um, well, I mean, obviously with the drop shadows, depending on where your light source is coming from, you know, maybe you have like the little drop shadow, like he's pushing everything down a little bit more. You mean like here, down here, underneath his hand yeah. and underneath the lip? Yeah. Make it almost black, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, it's going to be all black and gray, too, so I'm pretty excited about it. But I think I'm going to use some opaques and stuff like that, just very small amounts, though. I don't think I'm going to go too crazy with it, especially with it being on his hand. I think I want it to be as stark as it can be, especially with, like, some of the stuff and scale being smaller, like the, uh, like the demon itself being a little bit smaller. I want it to be pretty tight and detailed, I think, and have a lot of the contrast the dark contrast be in like in these pits here and on this arm and then have almost like the opaques being in this area behind him. So that way that'll stand out that much more too. And the opaques are in the, in the actual eye, eyeball part of it. I kind of feel like the bottom edge of the eyeball itself not the pupil, not the retina, but the actual physical eyeball itself. I almost feel like that should be a little bit lower. Okay. Oh, like the pupil? The pupil? No, no, no. no. The, actual, the, whole, like, the whole thing. The, the actual whole, just the bottom edge of it. Because eyeballs themselves are spheres. They're spherical, right? 
So like the whole physical space, the whites of the eye and everything, I think need to come down just a little bit more. I know most yeah. of it's going to be obscured. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because then this will give a little bit more of a gap like right here. Yeah, and I think the way, depending on the size oh, of the hand. Oh, sorry. I was going to say the way that like he holds his hand most often that's seen by other people, like with the placement on that demon, if the pupil's brought down a little bit, it'll kind of have that effect from the side as well. Yeah. Around. I disagree with both of you. <laughs> Well, we're going to see more like white of the eyeball behind like the demon's elbow but yes. i think it was actually just rotate the iris like up 45 degrees to like the upper right hand like make it so it's like looking up and away from the demon that would accomplish it do you know what I mean? almost this way yeah I, a little bit yeah. of like the light behind elbow and it's also going to give you this stress like the eyeballs looking away from the demon yeah. so it's going to like tell the like, fear from whatever yeah. this thing is coming at iris you know what i mean it's, drama. Yes. it's like it's going to make tension between the demon and iris the iris needs to be in strong and detailed and important eyeball and you should probably have a really cool reflection of the demon on the iris like just a silhouette oh. of him where would you but put I that would, as, as I, far I, as the what i'm sorry I'm, I'm sorry go ahead you're continuing i apologize oh i just kind of want to see like all of that iris as well as all of the demon you know what i mean that's the two like juxtaposing elements so they both need to be equally important you know and the funny thing is that i thought about having his arm come out just a little bit more and having it be more of his hand out here than anything else so his elbow would be here and i thought about having like his knee being up and his foot being pushed being the part that's pushing down like he's literally climbing out but i don't know if that's too much of a park parkour kind of pose you know parkour i, I really kind of like what you've got going on here i like i like the tension of his hand pushing down on that i look, like and i also think like a man little tiny adjustment you could make to the eyelid is actually like making it thinner and look like it's stretched rather than okay. changing the shape of it or make like right where his hand is make it look like that's the stretch. that's where it's the thinnest right I put my dog inside. yeah 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 i think i like that yeah that would definitely good add call. like more pressure to it yeah good call uh, and james wisdom said uh add eyelashes add up upper eyelid yeah, for sure. The eyelashes will be like here. Cool. Just cool. a little. No, I'll be right with you. What are you going to use to get into those tiny little spaces? Uh, I'm going to do a majority of this tattoo with a tight three. And I might use a, uh, a 15 mag for some of the uh, smoother shades. Just blast over it with a 23 mag, dude. Yeah, no problem. You can do mate. the whole tattoo <laughs> in three minutes. Yes, entirely. No problem. But uh, it looks, guys, it looks like my, um, my client is here for the morning. Uh, so I'm going to have to sign off now. Thank you guys all for your critiques and stuff like that. It's going to be very helpful today. I'll make sure and give us a post a little bit later this afternoon uh, of the drawing and include all you guys for uh, giving us some help. Thank you. Thank you. But uh, does everybody want to kind of give a shout out here real quick? Um, let's see who else in there. Uh, here, you want to say hello and how to get a hold of you and stuff? Where to find you? Okay. Um, hello, I'm here. Um, you can get a hold of me at uh, Frankie Says Things on Instagram. I am from Mass Western Massachusetts, and I'm out of a shop called Wanderlust Tattoo. Uh, you can find it on Instagram, Wanderlust Tattoo. Uh, you guys are great. Love hanging out with you guys. It's a good start to my morning. Um, everybody have good tattoo sessions, clean lines. Nice blending. We got this. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, Faith, can I give us a, a shout out? 
Sure. Uh, my name is Dave Nguyen. I run wincolor.com, which is W-Y-N-N -N, color. And that's the same as my Instagram. It's a free general tattoo art education program. And I have a new tattoo coloring wheel and color system and palettes and stuff, all featuring raw premium pigments. So check it out. Killer. Uh, let's see. Fawn, thank you so much for joining us today. I appreciate your insight and your help. Uh, that painting is looking killer. Uh, thank you. By little. Yep. Uh, you guys, if you guys want to pay attention, you can tune in Thursdays on the Tattoo Collective. We, we go live. And again, talk all kinds of art and tattoo stuff. Um, or on Instagram, I'm just Fawn underscore Baker. It's pretty easy to get a hold of me. Radical. Thank you so much. Jason, the man, the myth, the legend. So I'm Jason Leeser. I host the uh, Reinventing the Tattoo Drawing Groups, uh, the Skill Building Sunday Drawing Groups at 1 p.m. every Sunday. Um, feel free to tune in. I'm always there. Well, most of the time, unless I'm on the road driving out to Illinois or I'm at a show or something, but that's a different story. But yeah, come join the fun. Um, we're always down for new people, new discussions, new ideas. Um, and we're always looking for new input. Ricardo, Lauren, Fawn, thank you guys so much for having me on today. It's always a blast catching up with you guys. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you, Lauren, for all the technical help. It's couldn't I couldn't be doing this without you. Again, Jason, thank you for the support. Everybody in the chat, Kier, Fawn, Faith, thank you so much. Thank you, everybody in the chats for keeping up with us and uh I appreciate all of you guys for giving us a supportive environment to be able to talk about some of the things that we do talk about, especially when it comes to our emotional states and some of the things that we all want to share that we're too worried that some people might think we're weirdos for it, but it's okay. This is the right place for it. <laughs> so uh, thank all of you guys so much and uh, have a good, have a good day. Peace. Take care. Bye.